there, I'm Madison, a senior researcher at Environmental Progress. Last week tonight with John Oliver recently did an episode on nuclear waste. Although I'm a huge fan of John, I was shocked to see such an inaccurate portrayal of the issue. Oliver dives back into B-movie tropes to bring us this hot take. The U.S. government isn't doing enough to safely store spent nuclear fuel. And he claims we're drowning in it. There are more than 71,000 tons of nuclear waste stranded at the nation's 104 reactors. Put all those spent fuel rods together and you'd get a pile as big as a football field and more than 20 feet tall. Sounds like a lot, right? What Oliver just couldn't get around to sharing is some perspective. That volume of nuclear waste is 60 years of clean energy, and in that time produced enough energy to power New York City at its current needs for about 500 years. John Oliver is first and foremost a comedian, but it's clear to anyone familiar with his critically acclaimed show that he understands the importance of legitimate sources. There is a lot of bullshit currently masquerading as science. Not all scientific studies are equal. Some may appear in less than legitimate scientific journals, and others may be subtly biased because of scientists feeling pressured to come up with eye-catching positive results. Now, let's go back to the nuclear waste video. One out of three Americans live within 50 miles of high-level nuclear waste, some of which, like plutonium, is lethally dangerous and will be, in a, will be around for an incredibly long time. This figure comes from the privately funded Union of Concerned Scientists. Despite their name, the Union of Concerned Scientists is not a team of neutral researchers. It's an anti-nuclear advocacy group hiding behind the title scientist. The problem with citing this statistic is that it never actually conveyed what it's supposed to mean for those one in three Americans, what the actual impact on them is beyond the jobs and emission-free power. And neither does Oliver. Instead, he lets his audience imagine what it might mean and skips straight on to case studies from a different industry altogether, weapons manufacturing. Repeating a statistic published by an anti-nuclear organization without explaining it, its implication is a problem because it spreads blind fear and panic. We see this again further in the episode. Researchers are now studying an area in North St. Louis County, Missouri, where tons of waste from the Manhattan Project was improperly stored, some near a creek that winds through residential communities. And people who live there have noticed some alarming trends. I got on Facebook in order to reconnect with people from high school. And we all immediately started noticing that so many of us were sick. Here, Oliver is counting on his viewers to mistake correlation with causation. This was quite disappointing to watch because John Oliver is usually so careful defending this point. I kind of get the insistence that there must be a link. Uh, the age children are supposed to get the MMR vaccine happens to be the same age that diagnosable signs of autism can begin to appear. But correlation is not causation. That is what scientific studies are for. Attributing cancer to nuclear waste is no different than attributing autism to vaccines. It makes for great clickbait and worsens our public health, but the science just isn't there to support a link. And then we get to the potty talk. When Oliver talks about nuclear waste disposal, he asks where the nuclear toilet is, implying we need to flush this waste somewhere far, far away. It, it is pretty clear we need to find a permanent facility to store our most dangerous waste. And 30 years ago, we actually settled on a site, Yucca Mountain in Nevada. Congress passed a law designating it as our sole candidate for waste storage. The answer is simple. We don't have a toilet because we just don't need it. Today, nuclear waste takes the form of dry fuel assemblies, safely stored in boring, dry cask containers designed to resist earthquakes, tornadoes, floods, temperature extremes, projectiles, and basically any act of God or man. To date, there has never been an accident involving dry casks. Thousands of casks, decades of time, no clogs. If only toilets could ever offer such loyalty. Suggesting that Yucca Mountain is the nuclear toilet we need is no different than demanding an autism-free vaccine. It's an answer to a problem that doesn't exist. And saying scientists agree on the need for a nuclear toilet is misleading, because most nuclear scientists agree that the proper storage of spent nuclear fuel in dry casks on site should be the preferred method. 
realistic timetable is scheduled to have a repository in operation by 1985. Exactly. Nuclear waste is a problem that we were supposed to have dealt with in the 1980s and still cannot solve. Yes, we could and should be further along. And part of the reason we aren't is because of efforts to sow fear and confusion, which leaves us not with solutions, but only with politicized science, technological fear-mongering, and anti-scientific beliefs. John Oliver, if you believe in climate change and vaccinations, if you believe in the value of science altogether, please take a better look at nuclear energy and the key contribution it makes to the world's clean energy needs.